Hello everyone, this video is going to tell you about the five types of chemical reaction as listed on page six of your chemistry reference tables. The first type of reaction listed on your chemistry reference tables is the synthesis reaction. Uh, the generic form of which is listed as A plus B react to produce AB. If you're having a little bit of trouble visualizing what this would look like in terms of particle pictures, I've provided a particle picture version of the generic equation for you. What this is saying is that the element A reacts with another species, B, to produce a compound. In a synthesis reaction, there are always going to be multiple reactants and only a single product. An example of the synthesis reaction is when sodium metal reacts with chlorine gas to produce sodium chloride, table salt. So sodium is the A element and chlorine is the B element and together they form the compound sodium chloride. Notice that the generic form of the reaction does not attempt to include any information about subscripts or coefficients, as that would make the generic form of the reaction a little too complicated. So they totally ignore all of the reaction, all of the reaction coefficients and subscripts in favor of simplicity. The second type of reaction listed in your reference tables is the decomposition reaction, which is listed as the compound AB reacting to form the elements A and B. Decomposition is often thought of as the reverse of the synthesis process because we go from having a single reactant compound to having multiple product elements. An example of this is the decomposition of mercury one oxide into mercury two oxide, my apologies, into the elements mercury and oxygen gas. So here our compound is composed of the elements A, B, mercury, and oxygen. And then on the product side, those elements are listed as being separate materials, separate substances. The third type of reaction listed in your reference tables is called the single replacement reaction. In a single replacement reaction, A element reacts with a compound, BC, uh, to form a new compound and a new element. So on both sides of the reaction, we have an element and a compound, and they're different on the two different sides of the reaction. Another way to think about it is that the reactant element is pushing one of the elements out of the compound. So here A is pushing B out of the compound. A ends up in the compound with C and has pushed B out. An example of this is the reaction between potassium and hydrogen monochloride to form potassium chloride and hydrogen gas. So here uh, potassium is the reactant element and hydrogen and chlorine together make up the reactant compound. On the product side, potassium is now part of the compound and hydrogen is by itself as an element. Chlorine, of course, is still part of the compound. It hasn't been replaced. So here, potassium replaced hydrogen as part of the compound with chlorine and now hydrogen is the element. Another example of this is the reaction between potassium and water to form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Here, uh, potassium is the singleton element on the reactant side, and hydrogen and oxygen make up the compound on the reactant side. It's a little bit weird because when potassium replaces the hydrogen in the water compound, it doesn't replace both of the hydrogens, it only replaces one. We do see hydrogen as the singleton element on the product side, uh, but it is still kind of part of the compound. Uh, so this can be a little tricky for students to identify as being a single replacement reaction. In order to help you do that, there is a more specific generic reaction provided in your reference tables under the single replacement heading. This shows a metal 
reacting with water to produce the hydroxide compound of that metal and hydrogen gas. So if you're looking at this type of single replacement reaction and are having difficulty identifying it with the generic form, remember that there is a more specific form listed specifically to address this issue. The next type of chemical reaction listed in your reference tables is a double replacement reaction. So here we have two compounds on our reactants and we have two different compounds on the product side. But notice that the elements have switched partners. So here A and B are together and C and D are together. And then over here A and D are together and C and B are together. So if you are familiar with the FOIL method from math, right, we have our first partners are now together and then we have our inside partners are now together. This would be the outside partners A and D, and the inside partners C and B are now together. An example of this would be the, the reaction between potassium iodide and lead nitrate to form potassium nitrate and lead iodide. So on the reactant side, uh, we have potassium and iodine forming the first compound, and then we have lead and nitrate forming the second compound. The second uh, set of compounds on the product side of the reaction are the potassium nitrate and the lead iodide. So we've got potassium and iodine, which had been together but have since switched partners, and we've got the lead and the nitrate, which had been together but have since switched partners. So this is a, an example of a double replacement reaction. The final type of reaction listed in your reference tables is called a combustion reaction, and in particular the combustion of a hydrocarbon. This is more of a slightly fuzzy type of reaction, but it is such an important one that it has been given its own type. So in your reference tables, the generic version of this reaction is hydrocarbon plus oxygen reacts to produce carbon dioxide and water. Uh, the only new term here is hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is a compound composed of hydrogen and carbon. It sometimes has other elements present. It can include oxygen or nitrogen uh, or other elements, but it must have hydrogen and carbon. Oxygen is the diatomic oxygen molecule, carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. Uh, one example of this reaction type is the combustion of methane. So here we have CH4, that's our hydrocarbon because it has hydrogen and carbon inside of it. Uh, we've got oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water, all present in our reaction equation making this the combustion of a hydrocarbon. Those are the five types of chemical reaction as listed on page six of your reference tables. Remember that you will have the reference tables available to you at all times that you are working on this, these tasks. So you don't need to memorize the five types of chemical reaction. You just need to know how to use the generic forms listed in your reference tables to identify what type of reaction is taking place in a given example. Thank you very much and have a great day.